Later, Thomas and Percy were hunting chucks in the yard. They were having a wonderful time. They were bumping trucks and blowing their whistles. Just then, Mason left up when the two men hit for having a rest. He had some exciting news. There's going to be a one-off Sodal Grand Prix this year, coming this summer. All the guest drivers are coming to Sodal, and it's to help make money for help build Lightning's racing headquarters. Wow, that's exciting, said Thomas. Will we get to take part too? Oh yes, said Mater. They agree that anyone can take part, as long as they sign a special contract for each driver. Well, I'm going to take part anyway, said Thomas, because I'm the fastest tank engine on the island, and this can be better than the Piston Cup. What is called the voice? It was Tom. He had heard everything. The Sodal Grand Prix, said Percy. Thomas and Lightning are going to take part, and Thomas is sure he'll win. Oh, he is, is he, huffed Tom, who was still crossman for being bossy. Oh, yeah, boasted Thomas because I'm more capable of winning races than anyone, and I'm the second fastest engine. For well, it's not just you, other engines are fast too, and they might be as good as him as well as the racers. <laughs> That's unlikely, Tom, because I'm better at winning than anyone. Well, except Lightning McQueen, that is. Later, the Fat Controller gathered all of his engines around the station. He had some important news. Now all of you, I've recently got a new job at Sodal Television Station some new TV presenter. So you know what when he grants my gear set and has bet all you lot to be sensible while I'm gone. But Thomas was furious. Sir, you can't possibly be thinking about working for Sodal News. Well why not, Thomas? asked the fat controller. Why not? Because they're evil and they restore the truth and they pay the public for a public party. I mean oh come on, what other reasons do you need? James thought Thomas was being very silly. Oh, don't listen to Thomas, sir. You'd be great on camera, like all the TV presenters, said James. Well, thank you for that, James. Oh, here comes my train. I'll see you a lot later. Before long, Gorton puffed in. He was going to take the fat controller to the television station. He climbed on board, and they set off. Gorton arrived at the TV station right on time. The fat controller got off the train and went inside, where he saw Dave and Claire were waiting. They are both news reporters of Sodal News. Dave was the first one to arrive on the television before Claire, and they are both very good at reporting news. There was also a special screen frame so that Gorton could watch the news from outside. The screen has just been put up. Gorton was excited, and soon the news report was about to begin. Hello and welcome to Sodor News, and on tonight's news, a Siamese twins baby has just been born. Well Claire, if it was your baby, you'd be really freaked out. Also, if you're a writer of Thomas the Tank Engine, don't bother writing, because the recent stories are terrible. We now go to Sir Topham Hatt, for you know really what grinds my gears. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> you know what really grinds my gears? Parents should let their kids do anything they want. I hate that, you know? Like when I'm in a restaurant, like trying to enjoy my dinner, and a little child sc screaming his head off and giving me a headache. Parents need to control their kids. And that, people, is what grinds my gears, Dave. Meanwhile, Thomas was getting ready for his training, ready for the big race. Are you ready for this training, Thomas? asked Percy, who volunteered to be his coach. 
I sure am, Percy, said Thomas. Hey, what about to tip McBay and back? Too easy, called a voice. Thomas looked, and there was Tom puffing between them. What are you doing here? he asked. I'm doing the same thing what you're doing, said Thomas, training for the race and winning the prize money. Pah! Thomas is the best! There's no way you'll beat him, sniffed Percy. Oh yeah? How about the soda mission back of Tom? Come on, said Thomas. But, if you do feel tired, you could always stop and rest, he sniffed, feeling quite confident. Okay, this race will go from here to soda mission back. And whoever comes back here first is the winner, announced Percy. Then he blew his whistle long and hard. The race had begun. Tom and Thomas pumped their pistons. The two engines raced off with a chuff and a puff. Tom and Thomas roughed round the island. They clickety clapped along the tracks. They raced past warehouses and chuffed past goods yards. I got this one in a bag, sniffed Thomas. But he didn't know that up ahead that the Sittleman had forgot to change the points and they led into the carrot siding. Thomas was going too fast to stop safely. He biffed into the coaches and they crashed through the buffers. Bother, cried Thomas. Now he had to reverse slowly and carefully back to the points so he could pull the coaches back onto the traps. Then Tom puffed past. Hello, Thomas. Having a rest, he said cheekily. Bother! Thomas reversed back onto the track and was on his way once again. But he was far too late to catch up with Tom, who just arrived back at the yard. What's going on, Percy? asked Emily. Thomas and Tom are having this race. And what about Thomas? asked Edward. Well, he's not back yet, said Percy. Oh! Edward looked puzzled. What could have happened to Thomas? But then he puffed in, feeling tired. I don't believe that, he huffed. Are you feeling all right, Thomas? asked Edward. Yes, Edward. Just feeling puffed out. Well, I guess that makes you the winner, Tom, said Emily. Yes, said Percy. If you were that quick, you were sent to win that race. Hey, what about me? asked Thomas. Well, Anything can happen in a race, said Emily. And he had one with Bertie before, said Edward, but Thomas wouldn't stop to listen. No way. You don't have to worry about me because I'm not racing anymore. I quit, he huffed, and he puffed crossly away, feeling tired. Later, while Tom was resting in his shed, Thomas wanted to pay him back for making him look like a fool. He shunted a line of explosion shots alongside him. So you think you'll make me look like a fool, do you, little moron? Well, guess again, he thought to himself. Thomas shunted some dynamite trucks alongside Tom and took some back to his hiding place. But Thomas had got the wrong trucks. He shunted the ones that are not activated alongside Tom while he took the activated ones with him. He didn't know until... I think I'm going to cry, he huffed. Later, Tom had to come out of his shed to take on more water before he could get back to work. Thomas found a new hiding place, this time in the shed next to it. This time, I'm going to push as hard as I can, but Schmutz will go over the points and ram him trapped and then he'll explode. That always worked. But he didn't know that Gorton came into the shed instead. He was getting ready to get more energy before taking the fat controller back to the TV station. Thomas pumped his pistons and pushed his trucks over the points and hid back into the shed. Gordon saw the trucks rolling towards him and then became trapped and then there was trouble. Long live Jeremy! <laughs> Mm-hmm.